Lego the Mouse by C.B. Taylor, read by the author. Lego wasn't sure what to do, but in the back of his head, he had a niggling feeling that the choice he made might be life or death. Then again, just about every decision made by a mouse in this world could potentially mean life or death. Lego was hungry, and after much struggle, he had managed to chew the lid off a plastic bottle. The little white things inside didn't look or smell appetizing, but they didn't smell dangerous either. What to do? He tried nibbling on one of the little white things, and it tasted a bit funny, almost like a lemon. Lemons were not his favorite, but he was desperate. He hadn't had anything really good to eat in a few days. He nibbled a bit more, and as he ate, he noticed that the little white thing had a line dividing it in half on one side. On the other side was some sort of symbol. He'd learned about symbols when he was very young. In particular, there was a symbol that he and all his siblings were taught to avoid. It meant instant death. He'd seen the results of ignoring that symbol. His friend Maury had become so hungry, he chose to ignore the symbol and eat something from a tin that had the symbol on it. After cautiously sniffing it, he nibbled a bit and proclaimed that it tasted pretty good. A few minutes later, he was complaining about being thirsty. A few minutes after that, Maury was writhing on the floor, and then he was dead. Lego didn't need any more lessons along those lines. A noise startled him. A door opened. A person entered the room. Quick, hide! The door to the cupboard in which he found himself opened, but he'd managed to position himself near the back of the cupboard behind a couple of boxes. Where's the aspirin, Mom? Should be right there on the bottom shelf. I can't see it. Oh, hang on, I see it. It's on its side, and it's open. The lid's been chewed off. Oh, not again. I thought we got rid of all the mice. Better throw the whole bottle out. You never know what's in there. I think I've got another bottle in the kitchen. The young boy took the bottle, lid, and the three pills that had spilled out and threw them all in the garbage bin. Aspirin? What's that? The boy was looking for it, but was he going to eat it? Lego didn't feel anything bad happening, but then again, it wasn't exactly tasty. How can I tell what any of these things are? None of them smell very good. There must be a way to decipher the symbols on the bottles. How can I learn what they mean so I don't end up like Maury? As he pondered this question, he squeezed through the crack at the back of the cupboard and along the passage inside the wall to his nest. Here he kept some of his favorite things, stuff he had come across that seemed interesting, or things that held some mystery. There were shiny things and things that crinkled and crackled. There were things that had nice smells but were not edible. And then there were beautiful things. The things that Lego found beautiful were not the things that others might find beautiful. Instead, they were things that excited and expired Lego. A scrap of paper with symbols on it was exciting because he saw the people in the house spending a long time looking at such things. A key from an old computer keyboard was inspiring because it had a single symbol on it that he had seen on various scraps of paper in the garbage, and also because the people in the house spent a lot of time touching their keyboards. This particular key had a big round circle on it, and Lego just knew it had to be important. Lego harbored a secret ambition. He wanted to learn how to read. He didn't know any other mice who could read. Then again, he didn't know very many mice. He had been almost alone in this house from a very young age. He'd lost his friend Maury quite a while ago, and before that a couple of other mice had disappeared without a trace. He didn't know what had happened to all his littermates or his mother. When he was very young, he had entered the house through a small hole in the wall near the foundation of the house. But none of his family members had come along because they were afraid of exploring the place, having heard bad things about other mice who had dared to enter the old house. The best place in the house to find good things to eat was also the most dangerous place because the people spent so much time there. The trick was to visit the kitchen pantry at a time when nobody was home. However, Lego had not figured out a reliable way to determine whether anybody was home, and he had been surprised on more than one occasion. His escapes on these occasions left his heart racing and made it difficult for him to sleep because he would relive the close calls in his dreams, and he would wake with his heart racing. Lego had no idea how he was going to learn how to read, but he had long ago learned the value of persistence. He would search and think and explore until he figured out a way to learn. Chewing holes in boxes and chewing the lids off plastic tubs had taught him that sometimes it took a long time to see results. 
probably a more valuable lesson that he learned was that results in the form of tasty food don't always materialize, even after hours of chewing through the lid of a plastic tub. Lego was still hungry, but it was time for a nap. More than half the day was taken up by sleeping, an activity that Lego enjoyed immensely, as long as he wasn't being chased or making a frantic escape in his dreams. He curled up in the corner of his nest and drifted off to sleep. Within minutes, he was dreaming a dream where he was outside the house exploring the garden. There were many interesting smells, and he tried nibbling on lots of things. He ate a few seeds and found a couple of nuts. He came across a snail and watched it slowly make its way across a leaf. He didn't feel afraid in the dream, even though in real life the garden was a perilous place. Between watching out for cats hiding behind trees and large birds flying overhead, there were many dangers. But this dream was full of only the good things. He woke with a start. A loud crack and rumble came from outside. Then he heard the rain come pelting down and hit the side of the house. It was just a thunderstorm. He was happy to be inside. Well, time to start exploring again. Where to this time? He wandered down the passage inside the wall and emerged into the back of a storage closet with brooms and cleaning supplies. There was nothing good to eat here, and some of the things that he already knew were dangerous. But there was a bigger than normal gap between the floor and the bottom of the door, so he could leave the closet and explore. Night had fallen and he couldn't see any lights coming from under the door, so he squeezed himself under and into the hallway. The hallway was dark, but Lego had been down it many times and could navigate by sense of smell. He knew that the kitchen was at the end of the hallway. There were some great things in there, but that's also where the people spent a lot of time. It looked dark right now, so he made his way toward the kitchen. In the kitchen, his nose told him that most of the good stuff was up high, and while he could make it up to the counter with some difficulty, he could not climb up the tile walls to the high cupboards. He decided to explore somewhere new this evening. He managed to find a small gap where one of the lower cupboard doors wasn't fully closed. Inside the cupboard were some large metal objects, but at the back of the cupboard was a bag. He couldn't tell for sure what was in the bag, but it looked promising. He started to nibble a small hole near the base of the bag, and in no time at all he was through the outer layer. There was definitely something edible inside, and he nibbled at the hole to make it bigger. But as he did this, the hole suddenly got bigger than he'd anticipated, and the contents of the bag came rushing out on top of him. After the initial shock, and once the flow stopped, he tried eating one of the small, hard white grains that had come tumbling out on top of him. It was a bit dry, but it would do for now. He sat and ate until he was full and even just a bit stuffed. You never knew when you might have to go a few days without eating. Click, lights, footsteps. He'd stayed too long. He raced for the gap in the cupboard door and poked his head under the door. He could see the floor and the shoes of someone walking through the kitchen. They were walking back and forth, getting things from various cupboards and opening drawers. He knew he had to make a hasty exit or he would be trapped or worse. He waited until the shoes were on the far side of the kitchen from the hallway and made a run for it. He was halfway down the hallway before he looked back and noticed the person opening the cupboard where he had been just seconds before. He heard some clanging of metal objects being moved, and then he saw, out of the corner of his eye, the person removing the bag he had eaten from. This caused a cascade of grains to pour over the floor and resulted in a shriek of exasperation. Mom, there's a hole in the bag of rice. There's rice everywhere. Put the bag in a bowl and go get the broom. I'll take a look at it in a second. After putting the bag in a bowl, the boy started walking down the hall to the very same closet that Lego was heading for. Lego was sure he would be seen running down the hallway, but he managed to make it to the closet and squeeze himself under the door. He found his way to the back of the closet and out the hole, then turned around to take a look. He saw the closet door open, and the boy took a broom and a dustpan. That was a little too close for comfort. However, he'd eaten so much that now all he wanted to do was sleep again. He had heard the boy refer to what he had eaten as a bag of rice. There were symbols on the bag, and Lego had taken a look at them, but there were too many to memorize, and Lego's eyesight was not good, making it difficult to clearly distinguish them. He would like to be able to recognize the bag of rice again, and he was sure he could by sense of smell alone. But more important for his ambition, he wanted to be able to recognize the symbols associated with the bag of rice. 
Just above where he had nibbled the hole, there was a rectangle almost identical to ones he'd seen before, with exactly the same symbols down the left side and different symbols down the right side. Every time he'd seen this rectangle, the bag, box, or bottle contained something good to eat. That was somewhere to start. He would have to test this new idea. He made his way back to his nest and fell asleep quickly. After waking, Lego decided to venture outside. Getting outside required him to navigate a circuitous route along the passageways inside the walls. He had to go up and down and finally exit the house at the side, just under the gutter. From here, he could make his way down to the ground by following a drain pipe. Once outside, he had to be very careful. He relied on his sense of smell and his hearing to detect dangers, but he was keenly aware of the risks he faced. The best he could do was to minimize the time he spent exposed. The sun was just rising, and upon reaching the ground, he darted for the tall grass running along the side of the house. He made his way to a fence, and then followed the line of the fence to the back of the property. Much of the backyard of the house was shaded by trees and small bushes, and this suited Lego, as he was less worried about birds seeing him. Of course, cats were another matter altogether. He knew there were cats in the neighborhood and could sometimes smell them. Today the coast seemed clear. He scampered all the way to the back alley where the garbage cans and recycling bins were kept. He was hoping the recycling bin was full today. He was in luck. There were cans and bottles and papers and bags, lots to explore. He searched systematically for the rectangle that he had identified on the rice bag. He found quite a few examples of it, every one slightly different. In every case, the container retained smells of food, or even a few bits of food. He nibbled away and enjoyed the snacks, but this was not his primary purpose today. He found a few more boxes that did not seem to have the rectangle on them, and they did not smell of food. However, there were a few exceptions. Some bags had no writing on them at all, and certainly smelled of good things. Try as he might, though, he couldn't find a single container with the rectangle that didn't seem to contain the remnants of food. He felt this was an important breakthrough. Aside from a few crumbs, he was not finding much food, so he decided to make his way back to the house. He left the alley and entered the backyard. After only a few steps, a dark blue flash swept overhead and he froze in panic. He looked up to see a Stellar's Jay perched on the fence. The Jay had his back to Lego and started to squawk loudly. Lego knew from experience that the Jays often did this when there was a cat around, so he dashed as fast as possible back to the house. He hid beside the drain pipe, too afraid that by climbing up the side of the house he would come into the Jay's view. He waited, his heart pounding, as the Jay continued his squawking, bobbing his head as he did so. After a few minutes the Jay became silent and hopped about to face the other way. He was now looking almost directly at Lego, but Lego knew the Jay would not come down that close to the house. However, Lego was worried that a cat might still be prowling around. He wasn't sure what to do. After another minute the Jay flew away, and Lego took the opportunity to climb up to the gutter and inside the house. His heart was still pounding, so he rested here a while, until he calmed down. That was a close call, but worth it for what he felt he had discovered. He decided to explore the house. There were still a few rooms he had never visited. He made his way along the passages, and came out into the back of a closet full of sheets and towels. He had been here before, and he liked the smell of the closet. He had even napped here a few times, but it never contained any food. He was able to squeeze under the door and came out in a carpeted hallway. It looked empty, and he turned and ran down the hallway and entered a room. He could tell instantly by the smell that this room belonged to the boy he had seen earlier. Every person in the house had a distinct smell, and Lego could identify them very easily. The floor of the room was strewn with toys and books and some clothes. Lego's nose drew him to the floor under the bed. Here he found some colorful wrappers that had sweet smells about them. Sure enough, a couple of them had the rectangle he had identified earlier. He poked around a bit more and found a box with a package inside. The box also had the rectangle, but the package inside had no writing on it at all. It was still intact, and Lego couldn't smell anything inside it. But he reasoned that since the box had the important rectangle, the package probably contained food. He started nibbling away at one edge. 
The package was papery on the outside, but foil on the inside, and Lego hated nibbling on foil. It hurt his teeth. But once he'd started nibbling, he wanted to persist and find out what was inside. He nibbled a big enough hole to push his nose inside. Jackpot! Inside was a delicious treat, some sort of pastry with icing and a very sweet fruity filling. He loved it and spent a good 30 minutes eating until he felt like he was going to burst. There was still quite a bit of the pastry left and Lego was tempted to take a nap here and finish the rest later. But he was worried that he might be discovered. An escape would be difficult since he hadn't explored the room properly. Reluctantly, he left the treat and waddled back down the hallway to the closet and made his way back to his nest. He slept soundly and dreamt of the days when he was growing up playing with his siblings. Those were fond memories, and he often dreamt of such things after feasting. He wished he knew where his siblings lived. He would like to have shared the pastry with them. Maybe one day he would venture out and find other mice who might know where all his family ended up. Maybe he had all sorts of nieces and nephews by now. He decided to go back to the hallway where he had found the boy's room. It was light out, so he had to be careful walking down the hallway. He passed the boy's room, and a bit further down he entered another room by squeezing under the door. He had never been in this room either, and he could tell immediately that the room belonged to the baby of the house. The baby's crib was off to one side, and the floor was covered with building blocks and various toys. But it was the walls that drew Lego's attention. Even with his poor eyesight, he could see that the walls were painted with many images. Each image contained a symbol and an animal or household object. He realized immediately that these paintings were intended to help the baby learn the symbols. He felt ecstatic and knew he would be visiting this room often in the future. He started to explore the room, looking for other ways in and out. He went into the closet and found a gap at the side that allowed him to get into the wall. Once inside the wall, it wasn't too hard to link up to passages that he was familiar with. He returned to the baby's room, confident now that he could come and go as he pleased without being discovered. He stared with rapt attention at the images on the wall. After a little while, he became discouraged because he didn't know what some of the images represented. They looked like strange animals he had never seen before, animals with stripes. Even the images he did recognize, like the apple and the banana, confused him because he had seen the symbols beside the images in many places that had nothing to do with apples and bananas. How was he going to figure this out? At that moment, the door opened and he froze in panic. He was out in the middle of the floor, and he hadn't heard the people coming down the carpeted hallway. He hoped that he wouldn't be noticed amidst all the blocks and stuffed animals on the floor. The mother entered the room with her baby in her arms and sat down in a comfortable chair across the room. She reached over to a bookshelf and pulled down a book opening it up on her lap. She paid no attention to Lego, so he stayed stock still and watched her. Okay, sweetie, now let's learn our ABCs. She proceeded to go through the alphabet, reading to the baby in a sing-song voice. A is for apple. Look at the little boy eating the apple. B is for banana. There's a monkey peeling a banana. Aside from the fact that Lego didn't know what a monkey was, he realized instantly why he'd been having difficulty connecting the symbols and the images. The paintings were designed to allow the baby to learn the connection between the symbol and its sound. He stayed until the mother had read through the entire book and put the baby in the crib for a nap. He knew he had a long journey ahead of him. But he felt energized and excited to be going down the path to achieving his goal. The End